The UFC has some amazing fighters on the roster that fans love and respect, and they also have some villains that people don't like. But when it comes to the talent levels of fighters, I feel like a lot gets misconstrued. So today, I'm going to be giving you my underrated, overrated, and properly rated fighter in every division that I feel either doesn't get the respect they deserve, gets way too much respect, or I feel like people kind of know exactly what they're getting with this fighter, okay? I'm going to be doing every division, okay? Women's strawweight all the way up to heavyweight, okay? So, I'm going to start off in the women's strawweight division. My underrated fighter. I'm going to say Yan Xiaonan is quite underrated. She just beat Mackenzie Dern. And, like, no one is talking about her next fight. Like, what what to do with her. And I feel like the loss to Carla, uh, Carla Esparza really uh, shot her down. Like, public sentiment. Because uh, I know people talking about her getting a title shot before she even fought Carla Esparza. You know what I mean? I feel like Yan Xiaonan has a very well-rounded game. And I feel like with being Chinese, the UFC is going to be very interested in pushing her to the top. I can see, honestly, in one more fight, her getting a title shot. I could see her have, getting a matchup with, like, Rose Nami Yunus or fucking who else is in the rankings, you know what I mean? Let me look. You know, let me look, let me look. Who else could she get a matchup with, you know what I mean? I could see her getting, like, a matchup with, like, Amanda Lemos if she loses to Espaza or maybe a rematch with Espaza down the line. I, I could see her, she's honestly one fight away from a title show and no one talks about her at, at Strawway and I feel like the fact that she beat Mackenzie Dern, who's a huge fan favorite, really should have boosted her name, but it didn't. So I'm going to say she's my underrated fighter at Strawway, okay? My overrated fighter. I feel like a lot of people are kind of starting to share this sentiment, so it's less true than it would have been maybe like a few months ago, but Rose Nama Yunus is overrated as fuck, dude, Okay. That loss to Carla Esparza. I don't care what you think of the actual fight in terms of quality. The fact, the way that she fought against Carla Esparza, you know, the, the fight against Wei Li Zhang, the second one, like, it's starting to look more and more like... I, I rewatch it and I'm like, did Wei Li win? You know what I mean? Like, and the fact that Esparza beat... I thought Esparza beat her when I watched that fight. It was terrible. But I was still like, Esparza engaged. Esparza was trying to make it happen. Rose wasn't doing anything. The fact that you came out scared of Carla Esparza, bro. And I feel like a lot of the overratedness comes from, like, casual fans who kind of remember, like, the peak Thug Rose days, you know? The knockout of Joanna and all that stuff. Like, all that stuff is great. That stuff's going to add to our legacy. But this is someone in talks of being one of the greatest female fighters of all time. And she's losing to Carla Esparza in 2022, you know what I mean? Like, the way that she did. Like, she's scared to engage with her. She's number five pound for pound in the women's division. You know? And she just got choked out in 65 seconds by Jillian Robertson. So, you tell me if she's top 5 pound for pound in all women's history. Maybe she still is for all her achievements, but do I think skill for skill she's as good as... Do I think she's... I'm the best! Absolutely not, okay? So I'm going to say Rose Nama Yunus is my overrated uh, fighter at women's strawweight, okay? My properly rated... I'm going to say Marina Rodriguez. I feel like everyone knows she's a killer, you know? She's a great fighter. That stoppage against Lamos was terrible. I think she... That stoppage was just uh, so, so disappointing because I think she really could have beat Lemos. I think she's skill for skill better than Lemos everywhere. Um, you know, she shut down Mackenzie Dern in the grappling. You know, she, her striking is awesome. She knocked out Amanda Hebas pretty bad. You don't really see that stuff at straw weight. You know, to have someone wobbling like that pretty badly in the first round. So I think uh, Marina Rodriguez kind of gets the respect she deserves. If not, maybe she leans towards the underrated side, but... I feel like everyone kind of knows Rodriguez is a big threat at strawweight, and I think she still has a lot of potential to be, uh, you know, champion at strawweight. So I'm excited to see where she goes, all right? I think she's definitely up there in terms of uh, properly rated. I feel like people give her respect. I'm going to move on to the women's flyweight division. I'm going to say Caitlin Chukagi is underrated, you know? Sue me. I think she's underrated, man. I know she has no finishes. Her fights are boring as fuck. Like, she lost her man in Fiora, but... Skill for skill, she's beat most women at flyweight, you know what I mean? People that were supposed to beat her, people that were coming up that we were like, oh, she might be interesting against Valentina. Caitlin Chukagian has shut all of them out. Like, she will, she will quietly just go on like a six-fight winning streak, like a five-fight winning streak. So, I think she's definitely underrated. I know why she's underrated. She's quite boring. Her fighting style is just very, like, safe and, you know, some of them are split decisions. But, honestly, I think she has enough skill to beat pretty much everyone below her in the rankings on any given day at fly at women's flyweight and no one kind of talks about her in that regard uh the way they talk about some other contenders at women's flyweight so i think that's the definition of underrated even if you don't like her i think just skill for skill she just beats most of these girls so she's clearly not like being surpassed by the mma 
like catching up. So I'm going to go to my overrated, Valentina Shevchenko. Valentina Shevchenko's ground game, man. It's really like, you know, you're having close fights with Tyler Santos, dude. You know? I think the competition at flyweight is very scarce, and I think that kind of plays into why Shukagian is kind of underrated as well, because she's beating these kind of fighters that no one really, like, eh, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a big deal. But I still think Valentina is given this pass, almost, like, for her division, when Nunez, I feel like, gets more hate for the fighters that she's beating. Maybe it's the way that she's beating them, but, like, Valentina's competition is terrible. They're absolutely terrible. Like, Lauren Murphy... You know what I mean? Like, like Lauren Murphy is fighting for a belt in the UFC. And Valentina is like, oh my god, she's so amazing. She's so good. I think in terms of her competition, she's probably one of the worst champions. Like, she's just beating absolute bums. Obviously, she beat, you know, Joanna, but that's about it. You know what I mean? Like, she beat Joanna. Jessica Andrade, decent win. But is Jessica Andrade like a pound-for-pound pound great female fighter? You know what I mean? I don't think she kind of is in that regard. And... Speaking of, my properly rated fighter, I'm going to say Jessica Andrade. I feel like everyone kind of knows what they're getting with Jessica Andrade. We all respect her. We all give her a good chance in pretty much any fight she's in, you know. She's had good fights against Rose Nama Yunus. And again, Jessica Andrade isn't considered like a pound-for-pound pound great female fighter. And she arguably could have beat Rose Nama Yunus in that second fight. And she beat Rose Nama Yunus in the first fight. So that's another reason why I feel like Rose is quite overrated. But overall, I feel like Andrade, everyone kind of gives her the right amount of respect, you know. She gets a fight, we go, she's probably going to win by knockout, or maybe she won't, you know what I mean? We're like, we can generally kind of go, yeah, I think Andrade is going to win this fight. I don't think Andrade is going to win this fight. So, I feel like she gets the respect. She doesn't really get overhyped, um, and I feel like she doesn't really get underrated either. I feel like people give her a respect. So, she's my pick for the flyweight um, properly rated fighter. I'm going to move on. Women's bantamweight, dude. Holly Holm's underrated. I'm sorry, she is. Okay. She's underrated. I know she has boring fights. Everyone likes her personality. Like, everyone pretty much likes her, you know. She's still in the UFC. Um, a lot of people thought she beat Ketlin Vieira, you know what I mean? But even then, I feel like people underrate her. I feel like people don't don't talk about certain fights that she's had and certain performances that she had. And I'll talk about that in a second when it comes to my overrated, my pick for overrated. But, I mean, you know, Holly Holm's still at the top of the division after all of these years, you know what I mean? And on any given day, she can beat pretty much anyone in the rankings, but no one really talks about her. Um, I feel like a lot of it is fatigue. Like, no one really brings her up in, like, title shot conversations if she wins the next fight, even though she's ranked number three. Like, realistic, you could throw her in a title shot, and you'd be like, oh, okay. You know, you could throw her in a title elimination bout. You'd be like, oh, okay. Um, but no one really talks about Holly Holm as, like, a contender at women's bantamweight. I don't really know why, because there's... There's not people that I'm like, yes, she is going to be the next bantamweight champion. Like, really, at the top, it's kind of just a bunch of people that have been there for ages. So, I don't know why Holly Holm's not in the same breath as, like, Juliana Pena and all those people at the Raquel Pennington, you know what I mean? I think they get, they get more respect than Holly Holm, even though she's kind of on... I would say she's in a similar category as them. Overrated. I like Irini Aldana, but she's overrated as fuck, dude. I feel like people just like her so much that they overrate her. Macy Shiasson, not that good of a fighter. You just a weight bully, really. Like she's just a weight bully, and she was beating Irene Aldana before her fluky body kick that she didn't even know was gonna happen. And then she, afterwards, she was like, "Yeah, we trained that." So that was a bit fluky. She got absolutely fucking schooled by Holly Holm, and no one talks about it because um, they wanted to get a title shot. And I like Irene Aldana; she's exciting. But but is she like? Pound for pound skill level better than Holly Holm. I don't think so. I really don't. Like, call me crazy, but... Like, she got absolutely schooled by Holly Holm not that long ago, dude. She was losing to Macy Shiasson. Ketlin Vieira came in swinging like an idiot because she had no respect for her. And she got she scored, like, a one-in-a-million bantamweight knockout. Like, a women's knockout that was, like, a men's knockout where the person is, like, stone-dead knocked out. Do you reckon that happens 10 out of 10 times if they fight each other? Because I don't. So... That's my pick for women's bantamweight. I think a lot of people would disagree with me, but just looking at the facts of her last couple of fights, I think she's uh, quite overrated and she gets a lot more like credit than, you know. And I wouldn't say just the credit. I would say people just ignore stuff like the Holly Holm fight, which she got absolutely schooled. And, you know, Messi Shiasson was winning that fight against her. And Messi Shiasson's not that good. She's a weight bully. Her striking is fucking terrible. You know what I mean? So you tell me. All right, my properly rated, Kellen Vieira. I feel like everyone kind of goes, yeah, Kellen Vieira's pretty good. You know, she lost to Raquel Pennington, but other than that, I feel like people kind of give her the credit of like, yeah, she could fight for the belt. She's pretty good. I reckon one more win. She'll get a title shot. 
No one kind of says Ketlin Vieira is not that good, you know, or people kind of say Ketlin Vieira is so good, she's going to be champion. Everyone's kind of like, eh, like no one really cares. So I feel like Ketlin Vieira is not really a controversial figure at women's bantamweight. So I'm going to put her in as properly rated. I feel like people know what, what they're getting with Ketlin Vieira. So that's my pick. Moving on to the men's division. Let's get real, boys. Let's get real. I'm going to go a bit quicker with these ones. Men's flyweight. I think Tim, Tim Elliott is like criminally underrated. You know, he's always still in the win column. He's always right around that spot. Number 10, number 11 at flyweight. He gave Demetrius Johnson a really tough test in the UFC. Not a lot of people talk about that, you know. He's consistently been in the division. He's always had good moments against the top guys that have come up and kind of made their names beating him. And I think Tim Elliott's underrated. He's a staple of the flyweight division. He's been there for fucking ages, and he's still getting the thing done. So I think Tim Elliott doesn't really get the respect he deserves. He's kind of treated like a journeyman. And to some respects, he is. But at the same time, to stay at this spot consistently in the flyweight division, you have to be the hammer as much as you're the nail. Um when you've got a record of 19 and 12. You know, does that make sense? I feel like Tim Elliott just doesn't really get that much respect when he's, you know, he's still at the UFC level. I would say he's still a ranked quality fighter at the flyweight division. Overrated. This might be crazy. I'm going to say Brandon Moreno is quite overrated. Um, another pick I would give is maybe Kaikara France. I think Kaikara France, I don't know who he beat. You know, Askar Askarov, I guess, is the one that put him up so high. But otherwise, like, I just see Kaikara France always blows it in the biggest opportunities. And I, that also makes me think that Brandon Moreno beating him is not as impressive as maybe some people think it is and you know he's on the pound for pound list when his only win like of a pound for pound person was Davis and Figueredo you know what I mean and uh, and he only beat him once and he arguably lost to him twice so I feel like Brandon Moreno gets all this respect because people love Brandon I love Brandon Moreno don't get me wrong he's a great fighter he's an awesome dude but t is he pound for pound in the UFC is he really pound for pound in the UFC is he really? When he's lost, basically lost twice to Figueredo. I don't know, man. That's just my thoughts on it, okay? Properly rated. I would say he leans towards underrated. But I'm going to say Alejandro Pantoja. People are quietly building up. Like, people are quietly learning the name Alejandro Pantoja. I think this dude's going to be champion of the UFC in, before the year is done. I really do. And I feel like people are slowly catching on to Alejandro Pantoja. So, he was almost my underrated. But I think everyone that knows of him, knows how good he is, and knows he's going to be champion, I think. So I'm going to say Pantoja is properly rated. Everyone knows he's a killer. Everyone knows he's the real deal. Okay, I'm going to move on to the bantamweight division. I'm going to say it, dude. I think Aljamain Sterling is underrated at this point. I think people know that Aljamain Sterling is good, but no one really talks about him the way that they were talking about Peter Young when he was champion. Nobody talks about him the way they were talking about TJ Dillashaw when he was champion. Even Cody Garbrandt when he was champion. Aljamain Sterling has a win over Peter Young. TJ Dillashaw, and he finished Corey Sanhagen in the first round in like a minute. And no one talks about it, dude, because they don't like him. And because he won the belt in like a terrible way. I understand that. Look, I totally understand why Aljo is un under underrated. I'm not saying, bro, why is he underrated? But he is. No one talks about the. Everyone loves Corey Sanhagen. No one talks about the fact that Aljo absolutely smoked him when they fought. There was no controversy. There, controversy, there was no explanation as to why Corey Sanhagen got smoked by Aljo and hasn't been smoked since. Aljo is that good. Aljo is that good, dude. Whatever respect you give Aljo, he's a little bit better than that. And I feel like people need to finally accept that Aljo is one of the best bantamweights of all time uh, in this very, like, young division, okay? Overrated. I got two picks. Number one, I'm going to say Marab Duvalish, really, okay? I feel like people talk about Marab like he's fucking Khabib. He went 0 for, 6, 0 for 16 on takedowns against Aldo. He went 2 for 20 against John Dodson. He's 50-50 on takedowns against fucking Cody Stamen, all right, who's not like an elite bantamweight. People talk about him like, oh, dude, Marab would, just, Mar Marab would wrestle this guy into the into the canvas the whole fight. But Rob Duvalis really can't finish a takedown. He just holds people against the cage and knees him in the leg. His striking is overrated as fuck as well. He got tagged up on the feet by Marlon Marais. He should have got finished in that fight. He got absolutely outstruck by Jose Aldo anytime they were not hugging against the cage. You know what I mean? Under different rule sets, Jose Aldo would win that fight. You know what I mean? If he landed, if he had more damage, Jose Aldo, Jose Aldo could have won that fight. Marab Duvalis really holds people against the cage and knees them in the leg. And people talk about him like he's fucking Khabib. So I'm just sick of Marab, dude. He's not that good. Stop talking about him like he's fucking Khabib. All right? He would lose to O'Malley. He would lose to Corey Sanhagen. Okay, I'm fucking sick of him. I'm so, I'm sick of his shit. I'm sick of people acting like this guy is prime Khabib. He's not. Another guy that's overrated, Marlon Vera. Marlon Vera was losing to Dominic Cruz. He was losing to Frankie Edgar. 
His style is based on basically finding a knockout over five rounds. If you put him in a three-round fight, he got outgrappled by Jose Aldo, who's not who's not necessarily a wrestler. Jose Aldo with a boxing tattoo on out wrestled this guy. He had close fight with fucking Davy Grant, and people talk about Marlon Vera like he's the next bantamweight champion. I think Corey Sandhagen beats him. I think Sean O'Malley beats him in a rematch. Sean O'Malley was beating him in their first fight as well. I think Aljo beats him. I think even Henry Cejudo would have a decent chance against him. I could see him finding a fluky finish against Henry Cejudo, but this guy's whole fucking run is built on like fluky knockouts, dude. Like you were losing a you you were losing to Frankie Edgar. Let me just remind Marlon Vera, the guy who talks like he's like the bantamweight goat, who talks like he's like this killer at bantamweight. You were losing in 2021 to Frankie Edgar over two and a half rounds. You are not that guy, bro. Properly rated Peter Yan. Everyone knows Peter Yan really should still be the bantamweight champion and could have beat Sean O'Malley and is still one of the best bantamweights in the world and definitely belongs to be in the conversation as top five, top six bantamweights of all time. Peter Yan's really good, man. He could have, he could be in a totally different spot right now with a few changes in his life. So like in terms of other people's decisions and shit, you know what I mean? Like Peter Yan could easily still be champ right now. So I feel like everyone respects Yan. Everyone likes Yan as a fighter. Um, in terms of his skills, you know, he has great wins as well, and he kind of gets the respect he deserves, so I'm glad to hear that, okay? I'm going to move on. Alex Caceres doesn't get the respect he deserves. I mean, this guy's been in the UFC for ages. I think he's super well-rounded. He's on a crazy winning streak, you know. He's he's well ground, he's well-rounded. Like I said, he can win by submission. He's got he's got that nasty knockout over Julian Rose in his last fight. He's got a cool skill set. No one's talking about this guy in terms of like ranked fights they want to see, and I don't really understand why. I think Alex Caceres is an exciting guy at featherweight, man. He's finally hitting a good stride, you know. He's had close fights with like Yair Rodriguez. No one talks about that, so I think Caceres is very underrated. Overrated. Brian Ortega, man. This dude is top three in the featherweight division. I don't know who he beat to stay top three. I guess he beat Koreans over. He looked awesome in that fight, but he either looks great or he gets absolutely smashed, bro. And no one talks about because people like Brian Ortega. I like Brian Ortega, man. You know, he seems like a cool dude. You know, he's a bit weird. But other than that, you know, he seems pretty cool. Like that video with him and Trace Cortez where he's like trying to hug her and they're trying to take a photo. That's a bit weird. But otherwise, he's a cool dude. But he's do I think he's top three at Featherweight? Absolutely not. I think there's guys like Ilya Taporia that would have their way with him. You know what I mean? Even Chikadze would probably beat Brian Ortega. So I think he's quite overrated at Featherweight. But I think people are catching on as well, which kind of makes it a bit of a harder pick. Properly rated. Calvin Cater. Everyone knows this dude's a fucking badass. Everyone knows this guy is like the real deal at featherweight. He has a good chance against pretty much everyone in the rankings. Uh, I don't think anyone puts him in that championship conversation as of right now. Uh, but I think he's definitely properly rated. He gets the respect he deserves. Especially after that Giga Chikadze performance. And I'm really glad to see it. Because Calvin Cater is one of my favorite UFC fighters. And I think he deserves a lot of respect. Man, y'all already know what it is at lightweight though. But Neil Dariush is underrated as fuck, dude. Like, but Neil Dariush could le legit, legitimately has a very good chance to beat Islam Makhachev. And people, like, dismiss this dude. Every one of my videos where I've said, I, I don't know, man, I think Benil could beat Islam. I think he might beat Islam if they fight. I, th I, I think he has the perfect game to beat Islam. People talk about it like I'm saying fucking Grant Dawson could beat Islam. Like, dude, Benil Dariush is that good. He is top four in lightweight for a reason, dude. I think Benil Dariush could beat Charles Oliveira. I think he could beat Dustin Poirier, dude. Like, I think he would smash Justin Gaethje as well. So, I don't know where what Benil Darius has to get has to do to get some respect. No one talks about him at lightweight. No one wants to fight him. And I really think he is the toughest matchup for Islam besides like Charles Oliveira. You know what I mean? I really think he's up there, equal if not more of a test for Islam than Charles Oliveira. But no one, you think you think this guy is a bum the way that people talk about this guy. So I think he's underrated as fuck, man. Overrated, Michael Chandler, man. I love Michael Chandler, dude. He's not top five at lightweight. He's really not. Skill for skill, man. He has all the... He could be so good. That's the thing. I feel like people see how good he could be. But the UFC has given him such softball matchups, I feel like, on the way up. And I feel like he could definitely lose to some of the guys lo lower ranked below him. Even kind of unranked guys, you know what I mean, coming up. So I think Michael Chandler really has to prove himself in the UFC to prove that he's but deserving of being ranked number five and in contender, like in conversations with like Gaethje fights, Oliveira fights again, like McGregor fights. I don't think he's at that uh, stage right now. I don't think he's in conversation with those guys in terms of skill level, especially Poirier and Gaethje. I really think he's like just a step below those guys, especially with his fight IQ. That's his biggest weakness. So I think Michael Chandler, um, 
definitely needs to up his game if he wants to belong and deserve to be uh, considered a top five lightweight in the UFC. He's very exciting though. I like Michael Chandler's fights. Properly rated. Dustin Poirier. All right, man. I know that you guys know that I don't have. Ex I'm not exactly a huge Dustin Poirier fan, but the dude gets his respect. Everyone knows how good of a fighter Dustin Poirier uh, is. Do I think he's top te top 11 pound for pound? Absolutely not. But do I think he's one of the best lightweights in the world and uh, and you know of all time? Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he's top five at lightweight for sure. You know what I mean? Right now, for sure. He's up there. He's in that conversation with Islam and Charles and Benil Dariush. He's in that conversation. Dustin Poirier gets that respect because he deserves that respect. So I think Dustin Poirier is properly rated and, you know, it is what it is. This is where it gets spicy, dude. Bilal Muhammad's underrated. I feel like you guys knew this was coming. I think Bilal Muhammad is really underrated. I think he definitely has a good chance against Leon Edwards. I don't. I think it's weird because I think Colby Covington is a good matchup for him. Um, Kamaru is a tough matchup for him. Chimaev is a tough matchup. But I think, honestly, he does have a very good chance to beat Leon Edwards. And people kind of talk about Bilal like he's a joke. But I think Bilal has serious championship level um, qualifications. And I think he could definitely... Hey, I think he could definitely shock the world and become World Away Champion soon. So if he keeps doing what he's doing, I think Bilal might finally get his respect. But right now, no one puts respect on this dude's name. All right, And no one remembers the name when you need to, bro. Because he's, he's the beast. He is the guy at Welterweight. Okay, overrated. Kamara Usman. I don't mean in terms of legacy. Obviously, Kamara Usman is one of the top three Welterweights of all time. But skill for skill. Is Kamara Usman really that good at striking, dude? Is Kamara Usman really that good at wrestling and grappling? Because his wrestling is really good. I'll say yes. Yes, his wrestling is that good. His grappling is straight up just jujitsu. I mean, he's. I feel like his jujitsu is just not that good. Like, people talk about this dude like he's unstoppable on the ground. In the stand-up, in the wrestling, yes, he's unstoppable. His power is crazy. But his striking technique is still not good. He ducks his head. He swings with two, ha two hands at the same time. He puts his eyes down and head down. He panics when he's hurt. His, you know what I mean? His takedown defense is good. But his jujitsu, when he's on the ground, you've seen him get tied up by Damian Maia. You've seen him get tied up by Leon Edwards on the ground. You know what I mean? Even against Colby Covington, you know what I mean? His his takedown defense didn't lead to anything, you know what I mean? I feel like better grapplers would have tried to pull a guillotine. I know for a fact Leon Edwards would have tried a guillotine. Hamza Chemaev would have thrown off, thrown off an anaconda or a dart stroke there. Kamaru Usman's wrestling is really good, but I feel like his grappling as a whole is definitely overrated. And his striking technique, I feel like it's definitely overrated. He has power. He has knockout power. He has precision. But his striking technique and his... His IQ on the feet is really, really bad. He ducks his head a lot. He has a lot of like uh, tendencies on the feet that got him knocked out by Leon Edwards, and that could get him knocked out again. So I think Kamaru Usman's a bit overrated skill-wise. But legacy-wise, yes, he is, he's one of the best welterweights of all time. Steven Thompson, properly rated. Everyone knows Wonderboy is that dude. Um, do they, does anybody think Wonderboy is going to be champion anytime soon? Nope. But do people think that Wonderboy is still one of the best strikers in UFC history? Yeah. So I feel like Wonderboy gets his respect. Pretty easy pick here. I'm going to move on. Alright, middleweight. I think Jared Cannonier is mad underrated, man. He's pretty good. You know, he stayed at the top of middleweight. Um, he's really only lost to the best guys. He's only lost to Adesanya and um, Whitaker. You know, and even against Whitaker, he looked pretty good. Like, he had his moments against Whitaker. And, and now, the more Whitaker wins, that looks even better for him. Um, I think after the, the Israel-Adesanya fight, people have kind of lost any interest in Jared because... They know he's not probably not going to get a belt. I would still like to see him fight Pereira at some point. Maybe if Pereira loses to Izzy, that would be a cool fight. Um, but I don't think Jared Cannonier kind of gets the hype or the respect that he deserves when he's, you know, for his age, he's still quite uh, quite a powerful striker. He's pretty technical. He doesn't really get the respect on it as a technical striker. And, you know, he showed some opening against Israel Adesanya that Alex Pereira kind of smashed wide open. So I think Jared Cannonier deserves more respect at middleweight. Overrated. Marvin Vittori. Dude, people talk about Marvin Vittori. Like, people genuinely think Marvin Vittori could beat Alex Pereira. And people talk about the control time that he had against Izzy and all this shit. Marvin Vittori's striking is terrible, okay? His wrestling is fucking not, is not as good as you think, dude. Okay. His control time, that includes time against the fence, dude. He took Izzy down, like, two times. His highlight in that fight was a rear naked choke that wasn't even close. Okay? On the feet, he has absolutely nothing... Um, besides his chin and his durability. I think a lot of people know, truthfully, how good Marvin Vittori is in terms of his chin and his durability. He's got one of the best chins in the UFC. Um, 
But do I think that this guy has any skills to beat Robert Whitaker, Alex Pereira, Israel Adesanya? No, I really don't. I think his striking is not good enough to where he can mix in takedowns on Alex Pereira. I think Robert Whitaker, yes, you can make that argument. Israel Adesanya, he caught Alex Pereira trying to take him down, swept him, got a takedown. Do I think he would engage with Marvin Vittori in the setup? No. In, in the wrestling? No. I think he would just pick apart Marvin Vittori in the feet and knock him the fuck out. So, I think Marvin Vittori is mad overrated, bro. People talking about this guy could beat Pereira. I'm sorry. He's, you have to have skills to beat Pereira, dude. It takes more than a chin and durability. We saw what happened to Sean Strickland. I think Marvin Vittori is just a slightly tougher, slightly bigger Sean Strickland. I, re- I Honestly, honestly, that's how I would describe Marvin Vittori. A better chin, Sean Strickland, with a bit more power, but not not even that much power. So, properly rated. Robert Whitaker. Everyone knows Robert Whitaker should be the champion, really. he's he. I'm glad he's on the pound-for-pound pound list, finally. He deserves to be top 11, top 10, honestly, on the pound-for-pound He deserves to be above Dustin Poirier on pound-for-pound pound list. Um, but everyone knows Robert Whitaker is that good, and I'm glad that Robert, Robert Whitaker gets that respect, because he is so fucking good, dude. And he's really, on any day, he could become the middleweight champion again, so... I'm glad people give Robert Whitaker his flowers because he is that good, man. If not better. So, that's my pick. Yet another champion that I think is underrated. Light heavyweight. I'm going to go Glover Teixeira. This dude was 30 seconds away from beating Yuri Prohaska. So, I don't know why he's the underdog against Jamal Hill, who's ranked number 7. Um, I think Glover Teixeira will beat Yuri Prohaska if they fight again. And I think he's going to beat Jamal Hill. And I think he honestly could beat... Magomed Ankalaev, but people talk about this dude like he's washed. Um, you know, every single fight, they're like, oh, I think Glover Teixeira, I think it might be the end for him. And I just I just don't see it. I think Glover Teixeira looks better than he ever has. Even in his last fight, he looks better than he ever has. And, you know, I think Glover Teixeira is still underrated somehow. I don't know how he's still underrated, but he is, okay? So, he's my pick. Overrated. Anthony Smith. Dude, Anthony Smith thinks he's like elite at light he- light heavyweight, and I'm just sorry to say this, but you're just not, bro. Like, Anthony Smith has so much experience. I get that his jujitsu is good. He went on a nice little streak, but really, like, his streak wasn't against the highest level of competition. Like, he beat Devin Clark as one of his wins to get back to the title. You know what I mean, man? Like, any 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 guy that that is like close to the top five or in the top five, Anthony Smith just doesn't have it with the man. Like. Glover Teixeira beat the brakes off him. Ant- Rakic had a walk-off decision against him. You know what I mean? Uncle Live smashed him. You know, I-, I think Jan Blachowicz would smash him. I think Yuri Prohaska would knock him out. You know what I mean? So I just don't think Anthony Smith is at the level that the UFC puts him at and that most UFC fans kind of put him at because they like him. You know what I mean? Personally. I think Anthony Smith is mad overrated, dude. I don't think he belongs at the top of light heavyweight. Uh, properly rated, Jan Blachowicz. Everyone knows Jan Blachowicz is pretty good. Um, you know, he, I wouldn't say he's the best light heavyweight champion ever, but I think a lot of people give him enough respect because of how biased the commentary was against him that he beat Adesanya. He had so such a close fight against Ankalaev. You know, he's been he. You know, he, no one no one thinks he's the best light heavyweight champion, but people give Jan Blachowicz his respect. So I think he deserves to be uh, properly rated, and I think he is quite properly rated by the fans. So that's my pick. Last one, heavyweight division. Some days, people are going to stop sleeping on this dude. Curtis Blades is still underrated. I don't understand, dude. I don't know what else he has to do, bro. He always... I understand that every time he got to the big fight, he kind of lost it. Like, he lost to Derek Lewis, you know what I mean? Um, He lost to Ngannou when he's about to get a title shot. But other than that, Curtis Blades has beat everyone else at heavyweight. You know what I mean? And I think Curtis Blades beats some guys that are above him, fighting for belts and, like, being considered to fight for belts. You know what I mean? I think he beats old Stipe right now. I think he beat Cyril Gaon with his wrestling. The Gaon that we saw against in his last two fights. I think he beats Gaon. His striking has improved. And I think he beats the guy that I'm going to put as overrated on this list. Sergei Pavlovich. I don't know what Sergei Pavlovich did to end up ranked number 3. Ranked above Curtis Blades. You beat Derek Lewis in the first round. And you beat Tai Tuivasa in the first round. This is a Tai Tuivasa coming off a knockout. A bad, bad knockout. Like two months beforehand. And a Derek Lewis who beat Chris Dorcas, you know what I mean? And got knocked the fuck out by Taito Ivasa two fights ago, you know what I mean? So, I don't really see what the thing is with Pavlovich. I feel like no one... Are we going to just forget the fact that Overeem... Alistair Overeem, by the way, not, you know, not Curtis Blaze, not fucking, you know, Shamila, not, not, you know, not Stipe, no Grappler. Overeem took this dude down and smashed him inside a round. 
in his UFC debut. I don't care that it was his debut, it was his first fight, you know. That's not a good sign to me, dude. I think Curtis Blades would take down Sergei Pavlovich and TKO him on the ground. I really do. I don't know why he's ranked above Curtis Blades, and I don't think Sergei Pavlovich would beat John, uh, Cyril Garn. I don't think he would beat John Jones. I think he would have had a good chance against Francis Ngannou. I think he has a good chance against Old Stipe. But other than that, I think Cyril Garn would beat him, like just outpointing him and keeping him at bay long enough to kind of tire him out and then beat him up. And I think Curtis Blades would just walk across the cage and take him down and finish him. So I don't know why he's ranked above Curtis Blades. I don't know why people talk about this guy like he deserves a title shot. I'm sorry, but beating Tui Tai Tui Vasa, whose only current ranked win is fucking Derek Lewis, and Derek Lewis, whose only current ranked win is Chris Dorcas and Blagoy Ivanov, you know, not exactly the best competition. I don't know how you're ranked above Curtis Blades for that. So Sergey Pavlovich is overrated as fuck, dude. And properly rated Chris Dorcas. Everyone knows what it is with Chris Dorcas. You know, we all know what's up, okay? I don't have to say anything about the heavyweight GOAT, Chris Dorcas, but he is he properly rated. Everyone knows the GOAT with Chris Dorcas. So, look, let me know what you think of my, my predictions down below. This was a longer video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Subscribe for more videos, more rant videos, more matchmaking videos, more prediction videos. And uh, just comment your list down below as well. If you have different, different opinions, comment down below. All right, boys? I'll see you in the next video, boys. Thanks for watching if you stayed all the way through. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video, dude.